legacy of changes. We're talking about units and the most recent community feedback thread. Some of the changes they're proposing, that sort of stuff. We have a great panel tonight, including Sir Robin. I am Caustic and Boss Terror. I'm Shaft. It's great to meet you guys. I'm glad you're here. And if you've made it through this uh, episode up to this point, thanks for tuning in again. That being said, let's talk about Liberators, because Blizzard is proposing requiring them to be upgraded again before they can attack ground. This would put smiles on a lot of salty Zerg faces, but how will it change the larger, how much of an impact will it have on the larger metagame? Um, I'm not that up to date to the new changes to mm -hmm. Legacy of the Void since I kind of lost passion after, you know, they did a lot of stuff that I didn't like. So, um, just tell me, um, which building did they put that on for the Liberator? It's it? the uh, Starport. So, it's the Tech Lab, right? <laughs> I, I think so. Actually, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, so we'll just assume that it's on the tech lab then. <laughs> yeah, he's so, checking um, now, but we'll assume it until he checks. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. going to look at that real quick. That's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. I'm not 100% sure. It's, it's on the tech lab. Okay. That sounds I think, right. I think that's a really bad change then, um, because what that does is it basically uh, destroys Terran's ability to do Hellbad pushes and early pushes against Zerg and stop them from getting that big Ravager army. It's basically... Terrans pushes in the normal TVZ hots meta where it stops Zerg from being greedy, so it's mm -hmm. a big part of the game. And uh, Liberators are like the only only reason where why uh, Terran is still playable, mm -hmm. because Bio alone doesn't work because the, they, they nerfed the Marauders beyond point, and then they and then they buffed uh, Disruptors at Adepts, and they gave this Zerg this huge mid game army. So Bio alone does not work. So if, if Zerg can squeeze out an army before our Liberators are functional, then we're dead. There's nothing we can do. So okay. yeah, yeah, that's that's about it. Any other opinions? My opinion is pending. Uh, um, okay. I would like to see how it pans out personally before okay. I have any serious opinions on it. Okay. Um, because yeah, like right now, Zerg players are having a hard time with it. Yeah. So, Robin, you're a Zerg player. Yep. I think it's. Uh, I've never really had much of an issue with like with the, the um, Liberator and anything other than the fact that the maps may have some blind spots where you can't really hit them, mm -hmm. but they can kind of hit some spots to your middle line, and so you're forced to go Muta. Those are bad, and that's the reason why they're changing this is so then they don't have to change maps for the, that Liberator style mm -hmm. to feel viable. So they're gonna, you know, make it tap tech lab so they don't have to balance maps around that yeah and that's i think absolutely the best best way because uh anytime when the liberator actually is pushing you mm -hmm. even if they have the same number or anything like that i mean they're really they they do actually with certain ramps and certain maps it's going to be more powerful because you mm -hmm. can't get out of the circle and so that's where you have to see it coming, set up a either a, a positional flank or just really just go for a counterattack. Counterattacks are really good against the Liberators because it's not like they can go home and just instant, instantly stop you from doing damage to them. So I think the Liberator is a really good unit, and I think this is all the nerf needs. They shouldn't do anything else, and I think, I think it'll just be a really good core Terran unit. Okay. Well, how would nerfing it... Uh, nerfing the Liberator affect other Terran matchups, TVT, T TVP. Um, in TVP, I think I think the Liberator, Liberator is even more important because mm -hmm. Adepts are so strong mm -hmm. against Bio. And, and after the Cyclone nerf, uh, Mech is pretty much unplayable uh, without Liber Liberators especially. Because Cyclones, they do... Pretty much no damage. Like uh, if you see against against Air, that is uh, if if you ever see a cyclone opening against Oracle, cyclone does I think uh, the same damage as two Marines. So think about two Marines. It's shooting down an Oracle while it's killing your SCVs, but mm -hmm. except except the Oracle can't kill the two Marines down because it's it's a cyclone, right? So that's pretty much what it is. So, so mech openers aren't that viable against Pardos. And then at the other side, if you look at Bio, um, Adept pretty much just kills a Terran if you can't get a, a, a really good defense. And then there's these pylon rushes as well. Um, so yeah, Terran has to be on the defensive pretty often against Pardos. But if we can get past that point, then we usually win because the Liberator. So 
Yeah. That's that's the core unit. That's the that's the big unit that stops the adepts. That stops the big heavy big heavy units that Protoss has. And mm -hmm. if the, if they're gonna nerf that at a point where Terran really needs it, and I'm not completely sure because I don't know the exact time where uh, you can get the Liberator upgrade and 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 how it corresponds to the Protoss all ends. But if that affects it in any way, then I I think that it's a really bad change. Okay. Well, it'll it'll make it yeah. a tech lab rather than a reactor. So it'll be you'll almost in a sense have to build two starports to use a reactor. I mean, obviously after the upgrade, you can pick it up and put it on a reactor. But uh, the idea is that not not only is it going to delay you know the frontal or the side harass pushes with the liberator, but you also just won't be able to produce them as quickly because you need that. You you definitely want that upgrade. You pretty much need it. Otherwise. You're all, you're kind of like at the corruptor, and <laughs> nobody wants to be the corruptor. So, uh, so I mean, your your initial production is going to be slowed, so you won't have four liberators out by the first eight, like eight mutas popping or something. I mean, it's tough. It's tough to get to mutas in like I see the void, and um, especially you know if somebody's doing a blind, you know, double liberator kind of action, they can. So I I, I think it it should slow down a little bit, but at the same time in the end game, once again it's another one of those oh man it's new I don't really know how to stop it kind of like the speed boost, but people will realize that that time mm -hmm. right now the certain the the certain amount of decision making you're making during that like shift time it is is not as refined as it will be later on. So it's that that time is going to be more valuable or or hurts or hurt the Terran more, whichever side you're you're really referring to, more than it will right now. And so that the liberator in a sense will over time could be slightly nerfed um, because of the nature of that kind of unit. Um, so so I think it's it's in a good place other than the fact that yeah, delay the initial first kind of push I, I i think it's it's not too bad but once again uh, yeah yeah i, I just have one bad. thing to say mm -hmm. um if nerfing the liberator makes tvp nigh impossible you have much bigger problems than the liberator well to go off that you know you you're voicing the issue with adept and that was really big because against terran they can just go past your defenses uh, past yeah. the bunker, past the bunker, and then they force you at the fight with your your weaker units because the, they counter your tier one units. And so, so yeah, they either need to make a ghost have like a shorter cooldown or mm -hmm. or or a longer cooldown. I mean, or uh, you know, just a, a HP nerf so then they don't they're not so tanky because they're just ha harass mobile units that are also tanky and it's so, interesting you say that because Blizzard's actually talking about giving uh, adepts at an HP buff <laughs> of course they would why wouldn't yeah. they well they, they, exactly they suggested they that they've also suggested making them an armored unit um, mm -hmm. and, and I mean it even seems like pro Protoss hate the adept like why do Terran hate the adept so much but then why do Protoss hate it in PvP like everyone seems to hate the unit um yeah I think that's uh, that's a pretty big mistake because yeah. if you look at the whole uh, if you compare the adept to the stalker for one an um, adept costs less and it uh in, in gas and minerals mm -hmm. and at the same time it also has more health I think 10 more health than a stalker so mm -hmm. That alone is a huge deal, considering it's a tier one unit, and not like an immortal or something. So it's basically a, an infinitely better alternative to a soccer in the early game. Mm -hmm. And then nerfing, and it's pretty much the core unit of both uh, both uh, non mirror matchups. I don't think I don't think it needs it needs a buff at all. I think they need instead buff the units that are used a lot less, so they can you know um, make make both the matchups a lot more uh, a lot more. Um, Diverse and you know mm -hmm. allow a lot of different options to prosper just as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think the design and balance of the game is not in a healthy state right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, TVP is like a very great example of that. Like when I go onto Huck's stream and I just see him like putting down eight pylons mm -hmm. at like the base of the Terran player's ramp, so that way he can get his mothership core over there and just like photon overcharge them and destroy the base. Meanwhile, he's like dropping adepts, like in behind enemy lines, and like, it's just like, what is going on? What has this game become? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, but that's that's kind of expected, though. I mean, it's just the beta. They're they're having changes like every other week, or oh yeah, or, for sure, for sure. You know, like people are testing out, confusing the changes and everything. But yeah, it's just like the fact that you can even like get those eight pylons there in the first mm -hmm. place, and then like have them have offensive power. It's mm -hmm. Like that just seems silly. Okay. Well, here's a question, though, because um, there was a, another part uh, of the community feedback where they were, were saying, you know, maybe health wasn't the best idea, but they were considering armored. Uh, armored, you know, there's, of course, it's going to have armor, so it might be harder to kill, but it might make marauders and other anti-armored units a little bit better and help those tier one, tier two counters to the, you know, what do you think about those changes? Might be okay. Terrans open up with Marauders? When there's I, don't think it, I don't know. I don't really think even if you open up with Marauders, I mean, you're, you're still going to be vulnerable to an adept into Oracle, not have as many Marines. Um, so you're not oh, yeah, making sure. them crazy. You're, you're not making them... Yeah, I mean, you're not making if, them like crazy. If they're going adepts, and, then they're not going Oracles. And if they're going Oracles, then like they're not really going... I mean, that's not entirely... I mean, that's not entirely true. But the thing, the thing about it is... But like you're not doing like mass adept like right right. But the thing about it is, is you can still use it harass way, adepts in the harass sense. And marauders don't have stim. Uh, you know, if the only way I could see marauders any way defend against adepts would be if they got marauders and they were actually doing a legitimate good damage. While at the same time, they always get concussion. You know, the slow concussion cells mm -hmm. uh, early, so then they can actually keep the damn add up close enough to hit them because the ghost is just going to go back and forth back and forth just like now so i don't think armor is really going to solve anything it'll it'll be a slight like eh, but then at the same time now yeah. bailings don't really don't really help you know you could use carpet bombs is what they kind of call it overlord drop bailings mm -hmm. and that would help against this mad mass add up crap that you see in uh in uh -huh. zvt or uh, cvp so you know the thing about it is like it's it's hurting one side match up to to help another. It's cutting off a branch on one side to kind of slightly grow the other, which I don't think will actually. In a sense, you're you're talking about that's actually a really good point because it is a light unit right now. So Zerg do have banelings as a response. So if they yeah. do make it armored, then you know helps Terran and then Zerg's kind of in a weird place. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, one le one less like, branch on your tree. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've used it before, and they, they, it helps a lot uh, when they're not paying attention. You can punish them because they have so little anti-air as well. Oftentimes, you don't lose all your overlords like you used to. Mm -hmm. So, how cool is that? You know, so essentially, it's not as it doesn't feel as all in with the style, and because you see the reward with the light, uh, you know, you can finally get rid of those those shells and. Or shields, and you can actually start killing things, and so, so yeah, I don't think armor is the right way to go. I think it's really just, you know, back in the day they buffed adepts by 50 health or shield, just straight buff, not the upgrade, and it's been the same unit ever since. And it just seems like maybe that 50 was a little too much. Try 30 or 25 extra, and see where you are. Um, I don't think a marauder is going to stop the harass mobiles, double sniping, workers, and giving you the same headache. Mm -hmm. And especially with warp prisms and such, now you had this heavy marauder army, now you can kill the warp prisms especially, let alone an oracle. I mean, you can definitely get warp prism out while doing adept. So, uh, so I feel like yeah. the adept is kind of like the Terran Reaper. But you know, like back when Reapers were overpowered, mm -hmm. and you would just mass Reapers, and then just destroy everything. That's kind of what the Adept is right now. And they do actually have like the same idea. They're light. They actually do bonus damage versus light, except they have more health than Reapers ever did. Yeah, um, and they both are kind of gimmicky. Yeah, in a way, you know. Um, so I feel like if they're to maybe scale back Adept a little, little bit, mm -hmm. um, maybe have it fulfill sort of a similar role to what the Reaper does, which is primarily like a little bit of early harass, um, but primarily scouting, mm -hmm. which would be great with its ghost ability. Mm -hmm. um, then maybe you'd see it in a more healthy spot. I mean, like you wouldn't see it used like in mass amounts, but mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? Have them run around, do harassment on expansions and stuff. You know, they might actually end up being more effective than Reapers in that regard. Okay, so final. No question of the night. We're going to wrap it up. Looks like uh, Sir Robin's getting sleepy over there. <laughs> um, 
final question of the night. I want to take it back to economy. Caustic, you're a resident expert on economy, so uh, this one's going to be pitched to you, and then we'll open it up to everyone else. But okay. there, there was um, a recent poll that was just ta uh, talking to people about how they felt about the legacy of the void economy. 27% uh, of the people say it's worse than Heart of the Swarm. 25% of people said it's better than Heart of the Swarm. 15% of people say that they like the incentive to not turtle, but they aren't sure it's the right method, and these people tend to favor things like double harvesting. Where are you falling in this, and what kind of options would be opened up by a different economic model? So, I'm kind of with the 27%. Mm -hmm. I do think that it's worse than before. Mm -hmm. um, primarily because they didn't really actually change the economic model at all. All that they did was they reduced how many resources are at your faces. Mm -hmm. That's it. So for, for the 25% that say, you know, they think that it's better, um, they're actually speaking to what the other 15% are saying in that, like, you know, you have less turtle playing and, you know, it feels like, you know, there are more bases and more action happening, so they kind of like it. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's the key issue. And that's the issue that's always been present for the StarCraft II economy was that you had a three base cap um, you know, people would try to stay on as few bases as possible until they really needed to expand. Um, partic I'm speaking mostly to, like, Wings of Liberty and such, like, where you just had one and two base all-ins all the time, um, unless you really needed to get, get a third, because bit by you're all-in for the work. Yeah, exactly. Bit by bit, right? Um, so, and then Heart of the Swarm kind of went in the opposite direction, because Wings of Liberty was so aggression oriented and you couldn't really get like a lot of economy except in a few special cases and those games were pretty brilliant um but yeah so part of the swarm went the other direction where you couldn't really do one base strategies anymore it's just like or you had to double down on your commitment to make it an all-in um so you only had like one base pure all-in right you didn't have any sort of like one base aggression and pull back and then expand from there uh and a lot of games kind of really became stale, right? Because you have primarily people just fast expanding blindly. Um, and that's kind of where Blizzard came into it with Legacy of the Void, where people are complaining about turtling and such, right? Because they're just sitting back and just building their economy and doing nothing until they have a three base economy. And then they just send their big death ball at you. So Blizzard's trying to address that by forcing people to expand. I don't think that's the right way to go about it. What method um, do you like? The method that I like mm -hmm. is, well, pretty much what I outlined in my big blog post. Um, link in the description, guys. Oh, cool. We have a link. That's sweet. Um, but yeah, just the idea that you have some sort of method which encourages expanding, but doesn't necessarily require it. And that way you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? And Brood War had this, and this is why my article kind of references Brood War a lot. I'm not trying to make, like, Brood War is better than StarCraft II kind of thing. Like, honestly, that's, like, a really stale um, mm -hmm. argument. Uh, the point is that there were good things within the Brood War economic model, and we don't necessarily have to do it the exact same way as Brood War did. Mm -hmm. But just the idea that having an additional base is going to provide, like, greater economic incentive mm -hmm. um, at a much faster pace than you currently see in StarCraft 2. And in doing so, you don't necessarily have to punish, like say, like a one base play. Mm -hmm. So then that way you can get somebody doing like a one base aggressive push, test the waters and say, oh, okay, this guy has his shit together. He knows how to defend like one base aggression and mm -hmm. you can pull back to get your own expansion and so on and so forth, right? And mm -hmm. the game kind of continues on from there. Uh, so in that way you get a lot more action in the early game without having to force it, right? That's what Blizzard's doing right now, is that they're just forcing early um, actions mm -hmm. by eliminating the early game. Right? You don't really have the early game anymore, you just have like really fast two bases, and then you go from there. Yeah. So it's, just, it's speeding up the process and it's speeding up the game, and that's actually detrimental to the health of the game when we go back to the conversation about how stressful the game is and how mechanically demanding it is, right? You don't even get a minute anymore in order to sit down, 
you know, take a breath and be like, all right, what do I want my strategy to be? What do I want mm -hmm. um, to be doing here, right? You're just immediately inside the action. You're like, oh, God, I wasn't prepared to do a TVP or like a PVZ or something, right? Because you don't know that until the loading screen. Mm -hmm. So you only have the loading screen in order to figure out ex exactly what strategy you want to be doing. So thank God for slower computers, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, that just doesn't seem healthy to me. And when you look at, uh, from an esports perspective, and you look at all of the top games uh, right now, like, so, I mean, if you look at Hearthstone, obviously that's just a turn-based game, so you have plenty of time to think about what you want to do, right, strategically speaking. Uh, you look at CSGO, right, they actually have, like, a couple of minutes in order for you to buy whatever items you want and kind of, like, coordinate with your team about what you want to do strategically. Uh, League of Legends and Dota 2, you know, they have like 90 that seconds. duration at the start of the game, right, where you can coordinate with your team and kind of get yourself into position, figure out what items you want to buy, uh, figure out what exactly you're, you want to do against, like, the opponent's uh, team composition. You know what I usually do during the first few minutes of the game, when there were a few few minutes of the game? I always found it valuable. I always finish my cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That works, too. I mean, but it's mostly, like... When we're talking about like professional esports, like the pros will already have kind of like their strategies before even going into the game. But when we're talking just casual players laddering, mm -hmm. they don't have that. They don't know who they're up against. They don't even know what race they're up against until they're doing it. And they need a right? moment to pull up their strategy guide. Let's face it. Yeah, exactly. Like you just need that moment. I feel. And so Blizzard's eliminated that, which I think is even more increased the bar to entry. Okay. Well, I have a question because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the devil's advocate here for a second because when you're talking strictly game design here, having quick iterations is always a good thing. So Legacy of the Void, at least they're trying to make the games a little bit shorter so that you can learn faster. You can get more games in under your belt. And I like the idea, how can there be a middle ground? Well, I mean, if you just look at Wings of Liberty, right? Like when you were actually able to do like one base strategies and two base strategies without feeling like you're putting yourself behind, depending on the match, of course. Or Zerg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like lots of games ended by 10 minutes. Yeah. It wasn't like you had an extremely long period of time of sitting around and waiting, right? That happened in Heart of the Swarm with their nerfing of early game strategies. Mm -hmm. Right, where the only viable strategy was to expand, and that just extends the length of the game. And now they're trying to adjust that, that by just saying you have to expand even more, mm -hmm. which is strange. Okay, me, personally, let's open it up. Like, to it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't at the same time. I feel like there's more negatives than there are positives to mm -hmm. the current approach. Okay, so let's open it up to the rest of the panel, guys. Where do you fall in that poll? What do you think, Robin? Um, I, I guess I, I like Legacy of the Void a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Me I too. am a big fan of eliminating the early game. I, I don't, I, yes, the game starts right away, but it's a different kind of genre of the game. People are expecting, you know, the game to start right when the game starts. Um, the elimination of one base play is not an issue and it's particularly in esports. I think it's a huge win because there's less random like RNG and now coin flips in a sense in StarCraft 2. Random no number more... generators. In case yeah. You're yeah. I mean, you do see it, but you don't see proxy raxes as much. You don't see uh, proxy two gate. You don't see those kinds of things. Why? Because it's the game's already started. You're already making money. You send the probe over right away. And yeah, uh, it, it can work and people have I do do it. You know, I've played three racks, especially when, when Zerg got nerfed down to two larva per inject. Oh my god, three racks was so so OP because you, you could just outproduce them. Actually, they couldn't just. Oh, now I have links, I can make them. But anyway, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that those kinds of strategies, six pool, is no longer viable. I mean, some people are trying to think that twelve pool is viable, but it's. I mean, it's just it's just not. Even even people uh, have realized uh, the, the top level players who try 14-14 mm -hmm. these days, just like Wings of Liberty. And it works against people who are worse than you, and mm -hmm. that's always been with, like, har har harass units. If you're better at, like, macro and micro, and you can slow them down at the same time but not slowing you down, then, hell, hey, you know, that's, that's a huge win. So 14-14 um, so still beats people who are worse than you, but mm -hmm. 
a, a number of Zerg pros have realized once they do get to that like that plateau level, uh, that kind of that kind of cheese doesn't work. And so really, just no one base play, and that prevents you from losing to something that you didn't even have the opportunity to scout for. Because sometimes, yeah, so if I can just interject really quickly, when I say one base play, I'm not talking about one base all ins. It's, it's, it's a different concept. When I say one base play, I'm talking like a lot. Like say, if we were to go back to Brood War. Mm-hmm. You well, would with see the players start of twelve workers. Essentially, two base play is one base play, and that's the idea: is that you you're given essentially right. so fast two base that it's really two base really is one base play uh, equivalent in terms of time as well. And so then time, three yeah. base is that's kind right. of three bases turn into two base, and then four base is like all right, now you actually are three base e three plus. Base econ. You can't really like max out on three base. You can, but it'll be the only maxed out army you'll make, kind of thing. Because if it fails, you don't have yeah. enough, enough money to really expand and remake that army. So uh, fourth this base. Why is, I think that's bad, though. I, I'll I like it. Exactly why I think depends it's on bad. the map. Yeah, you 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 you're a map. Not maker, even map. So. I'm just talking purely like you're a new player to the game. You come into it. How are you supposed to know that you're supposed to? Im- immediately make like a command center or a nexus I mean, or a hatchery like how do you, how do you, you even know that right you're just getting into the game one of the great things about it in my opinion is the the, the on that same note how do they know to keep constantly building SEVs and they have to do that and that's just as like absurd for somebody to know that no you can't build your your barracks. What are you talking about? Don't do the ten gate right. or something right like what do you what? no you keep building probes don't stop kind of thing those kinds of things are that same like you know uh, a barrier for people who are trying to learn and that doesn't actually make the game game worse for them in my opinion i think the faster pace is better for the newcomers because they get to actually start playing with things rather than being like this takes forever oh i'm not building SEVs. so the funny thing is, is that if you're a bronze league player just and you're just starting it out you know if you're just like, starting out then you you're not you let's say you stick at six workers and you never build more workers the game's going so slow for you that, you know, you know, of course you need it to be that slow, but at the same time, you know, you don't really get to try all the things, get the units out, move them around, mm-hmm. and the game starts right away in Legacy of the Void. So you instantly get to play with things. You get to play with an army, or you get to play with this. One minute into the game, you could be playing with Zerglings and not be 100% all in, because in those leagues, 14-14 is definitely menacing. So yeah. I, mean, those I kinds still of feel things. like you're looking at it from a higher perspective, like a higher league perspective. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about casuals. You are right about like a lot of them will just have the six workers. They won't even know to make more workers. Here's why the way that Blizzard has gone about the economy, I feel, is worse. Because you have fewer minerals at your one base now. So they don't know that they're supposed to be expanding. They don't even know that they're supposed to be growing their economy like with workers and such. They're going to run out of those minerals a lot faster, and they're going to have fewer of them to work with. Isn't so it they up don't to actually the get to do as to much. Teach them these things, though. The tutorials. No, isn't it up to us as a community to teach newer players, though? So how can we use those as our main measuring stick? Yeah, it's I mean, a philosophical standpoint, like being able to give players time to kind of figure things out, mm-hmm. right? We're eliminating that time completely. Okay. Yeah, I was saying if you look at all the way down to Bronze League, where there's probably a couple of years that in Bronze League. But my my point is that um, um, they're still really good. They know they know uh, to make their SCVs. They know to make their barracks. They know to make their units. I think about StarCraft is that um, the community is so small and dedicated that there aren't any people who don't make SCVs at the start. I mean, there's probably no one, like not not even a single person in Bronze, who doesn't know how to make SCVs or doesn't know how to make a barracks. So that's I think that's a really a rare example. Well, like it I, shouldn't be, though. That's the thing. It shouldn't be that rare of an example. Yeah, the reason I, why it's so rare is because the community has shrunk so considerably because the yeah, barrier to entry no, continues to rise, and these economy changes just raise the barrier even more. See, that's, I mean, the balance... People feel like Legacy of the Void is is faster paced, and and, and and obviously in instances it gets to the game faster. But that's also a big, a big good, a big yes. A lot of new, a lot of people in Wings of Liberty yeah, that are all my yes, friends. But we're you know. talking about the people that are still like dedicated to StarCraft Two, where they're looking at all the changes and such. So these people aren't looking at it from like Even, like barrier to entry standpoint. 
they're not looking at like how do we bring more people in casuals who don't have any idea how to play the game all these people that are like yay it's faster i get to go into what i'm doing quicker these people already know how to play the game they're the ones that are regularly laddering this is why we're talking about like hey bronze players the only people that are bronze now are actually people that seriously know how to play the game that didn't always used to be the case yeah and i think with when we do have newcomers come in we're gonna have now allied commanders we're gonna have archive mode if somebody really is starting to queue for ones they know to build workers at the start of the game they also understand the the nature of expanding otherwise you just lose all your minerals and so uh there are other um there are other non-ladder uh features of the game that's going to prep people for new for the game new covers yeah, there are custom games as well um so. in your list right. well uh i'd like to give boss Terran the final word on this subject and then uh we'll close out give you guys a chance to plug all your personal information but boss Terran, uh close this out man um yeah a point i wanted to bring up was that the only reason that they only only they, they made this change from six to twelve it wasn't to make the game um better for people in the lower leagues. It was simply because they thought like the first minute in pro games was boring. That's the only reason they did it. Um, if you think about it in a strategic point of view, um, like when you're going into a ladder game and you don't know what's in mind, and then you see this Terran logo, or this Zerg logo pop up, and they're like, okay, what am I going to do? And then as soon as you make your first SCV, you have to make a supply depot, and then a barracks or a, or a command center. It really cuts off your entire train of thinking because, I mean, if you're gonna do like a proxy rack, so you don't make a CVs, so you have like a split second, you have like a split second decision to make that, and and you have to basically make that decision in the loading screen now, not as you go in the game. I and mean, you can think about the map, think about if you ever played that guy before on ladder, how he plays, greedy or whatnot. Um, it just destroys that entire element of strategy from the game. And I, I agree with Caustic about the economic changes, where I think um the thing that they're doing um. I guess for the reason they're trying to accomplish of uh, destroying that mech um, turtle or Protoss play, but it's really annoying. I mean, it it doesn't reward the player; it demands the player. I mean, it's not fun. Uh, they probably thought it was a fun feature to add. It's not fun to like constantly expand and have your main run out at the eight minute mark. That's not that's not interesting. It just it's just a really big pain. And I think. If they uh, reduced the worker saturation for uh, a fully mined base, and they were actually rewarded the player. It didn't actually just simply force the player to expand. It'd be a much better alternative. But Blizzard already made their statement on that and said that, uh, quote unquote, even though this, I'm not quoting this correctly, probably, quote unquote, that's not what we're looking for in, in this game. Okay. So, yeah, they're not going to make that change, and that's quite unfortunate because I think that would be a much better alternative. I think that I think that about sums up uh, our conversation for this evening. This has been Legacy of Changes, guys. Um, big shout outs to our panelists tonight. Uh, starting with Sir Robin, let's go ahead and give your uh, personal information: Twitter, where can they find you, that sort of thing. Oh, you're muted. Thanks. I sleepyhead. <laughs> I stream at uh, twitch.tv slash Sir Robin. Mm -hmm. So find me uh, there. I'll start. I'll be starting up my uh, my Squire School, which is a Zerg coaching show. Um, probably start of next month, October, and it'll be Legacy of the Void. It used to be Heart of the Swarm, and then I took a break, and it'll be coming back Legacy of the Void edition. And then also my Twitter, Sir Robin SE2 at Sir Robin SE2. All right. And you can get updates there also when I'm streaming. Boss Terran? Um, you can follow me and watch my stream. I stream every now and then, usually at least once a week on uh, Twitch twitch.tv slash boss Terran. All right. And uh, since you don't have a Twitter personally, why don't you plug uh, the 1SH Twitter, your team's Twitter? Uh, we have one. Yeah, uh, I'll just put a. <laughs> I'll put that link. I'll put that uh, on the VOD. Uh, it's uh, yeah. at one step ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not that up to date with my team. Yeah, it's stuff. at one step ahead, SE2. Yeah, make sure to follow us out, and if you're uh, a mid-master higher player, then you can just contact our captain. We're looking for some new talent up in the NA scene. All right, cool. And Caustic? Yeah, so for myself, I just have my Twitter, at I am Caustic. Uh, feel free to follow me. All right, and I'll put a little uh, link in the description box to your thread. Um, so guys, right. if you want to check 
that out, please uh, give them a post on Team Liquid. Bump that thread. It definitely helps out. Um, I'm Shaft of the Clannic Casting Crew. You can always follow me at the only Shaft on Twitter or at Clannic Casting. Also on Twitter, you know the stream. You're already here. Twitch.tv slash Clannic Casting or, or YouTube. Search for Clannic Casting. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. This is Shaft. Big thank you to our sponsor, Zealous Web. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this content, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much, and have a great day.